A reading from the book of the prophet Zephaniah. Seek the Lord, all you humble of the earth, who have observed his law. Seek justice, seek humility. Perhaps you will be sheltered on the day of the Lord's anger. But I will leave as a remnant in your midst a people humble and lowly, who shall take refuge in the name of the Lord, the remnant of Israel. They shall do no wrong and speak no lies, nor shall they be found in their mouths a deceitful tongue. They shall pasture and couch their flocks with none to disturb them. The word of the Lord. fidelity forever, who does justice to those who are oppressed. It is he who gives bread to the hungry, the Lord who sets prisoners A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Consider your own calling, brothers and sisters. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. Rather, God chose the foolish of the world to shame the wise. And God chose the weak of the world to shame the strong. And God chose the lowly and despised of the world those who count for nothing, to reduce to nothing those who are something, so that no human being might boast before God. It is due to him that you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God, as well as righteousness, sanctification, and redemption, so that, as it is written, whoever boasts should boast in the Lord. The word of the Lord.
rejoice and be glad. Your reward will be great in heaven. Dominus Fabescum. Et cum Spiritu Tuo. Lexia Sancti Evangelii Secundum Matteum. Gloria Tibi Domine. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. Verbum Domini. Today, in the readings, I see uh, one of the main points is a focus on the law. The law in the Old Testament given to the Israelites, at the heart of which are the Ten Commandments. In the first reading from Zephaniah, the prophet says, Seek the Lord, all you humble of the earth, those who observe the law. Those are the ones that seek the law. They seek the Lord. They observe the law. I will leave as a remnant in your midst of people, humble and lonely, lowly, take, who take refuge in the Lord. They should do no wrong. So it's an exhortation to be humble, to observe the law, keep that law, and you'll be this faithful remnant. You're not going to be a majority. You're going to be a remnant. Right? I think if we get that peace... You know, we're not going to have great success, so to speak, in a worldly sense, in keeping the law. In fact, few, a remnant, is, are the ones that do. It's a smaller amount. Remember in Revelation 12, there's this dramatic scene of Satan, the dragon, pursuing the woman. And Satan, after he can't attack the woman, he goes off she's protected, he goes off to make war on the rest of her offspring, those who keep the commandments of God and bear testimony to Jesus. That's what the scripture says. Those who keep the commandments and bear testimony to Jesus. It's not flashy. Keep the law, keep the commandments. And Satan's gonna, who prowls about like a lion, is gonna rage against that. We're told he, he stands on the shore, he stood on the shore of the sea during this big 
battle, a confrontation, pursuing of the woman. He, he stands on the shore of the sea and is going to make war on her offspring. It's an image of Mary, the church, and the offspring, you know, those who witness to Christ, keep the commandments. The second reading today tells us that God chose the foolish of the world to shame the wise, the weak to shame the strong, those who count for nothing to reduce to nothing those who are something, so that no human being may boast before God, but that we should boast in the Lord. The remnant, the faithful, the disciple, is going to be considered foolish. God raises up and by his grace uses the weak to shame those who are considered strong in, in terms of the world. It closes by in this passage saying, it is due to him that you are in Christ Jesus. And it's all by God's grace because you're weak. You're nothing. <laughs> Right? You're, you're counted as nothing by the world, but you're going to shine and reflect this glory of God in the world, he says in 1 Corinthians. The glory of, of God is shining through man who belongs to Christ, who keeps his law. In the gospel today, the first beatitude, blessed are the poor in spirit, the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Poor in spirit, the humble, the lowly. Versus the spirit of the world, the flesh, and the devil, which at the heart of it, I think, is just this promotion of self. You know, if, if we stay in that realm, if we stay self-focused, self-centered, Satan can use us as he will, and it, he likes to stay hidden. But I think that's very much our flesh wants to stay in the driver's seat, keep us focused on self. The world telling us, need this, need to do this, need to have this, need to experience this, you know, in order to be fulfilled. And the spirit is in our flesh, and the devil certainly encouraging all that. But the greatness here is that if we have this poverty of spirit, if we have this humility, the kingdom is offered to us. The kingdom of God is offered to us. Something greater than the world, something greater than what our self what we can produce of ourselves, this friendship with Christ, this belonging with Christ, this sharing in his life, you know, living under his lordship, that's what's offered to us through faith and conversions, and conversion of life. In the gospel today, we're in Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. This is his great sermon in Matthew's gospel, the the whole of his teaching, in a sense. It begins with this simple line we can miss. You know, we're told that he, when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountains, you know, after he had sat down and began to teach. He saw the crowds and proclaims these beatitudes. And the scholars tell us that, you know, he saw these beatitudes in his disciples because they are conformed to Christ. They're following him. The Catechism speaks of the Beatitudes as portraying the countenance of Christ, that the Beatitudes are the vocation of the faithful in association with his paschal mystery by which we're saved. That's the dynamic we see. The poor in spirit have the kingdom. Those who mourn are comforted. That's, see, that's the dynamic of the cross and the resurrection. Those who are meek, led by the Spirit of God, who have his spirit, inherit the land. We can think of, for the faithful Jew, that would be like the promised land. They kept the covenant. They were given this land flowing with milk and honey. Now in the Beatitudes, it's ordered to the kingdom, that they have a fullness of life in the kingdom. Hungering and thirsting for righteousness, you'll be satisfied, merciful, you'll be shown mercy and on and on, that, that this lowering of the self, this humility, we receive God. So these are the attitudes, characteristic of the Christian life. They're promises and blessings that are already secured. We experience this heavenly life. We experience the kingdom. We experience this new promised land in Christ here on earth. Not the fullness, but we we experience something of it. 
We have an assurance of our salvation through hope. And later in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus says, I have come not to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. But this does not do away with the commandments. 1 Peter chapter 1, 22, you know, we are made holy by obedience to the truth. That these commandments are the path to life. And that path of life radiates through us, you know, through the Beatitudes, living those Beatitudes. But it doesn't do away with the commandments. I have come not to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. So the world says this is foolishness. The world seeks illusory freedom apart from truth. Illusory freedom. This will make you free. This will make you happy. You know, have more stuff. Do more stuff. Have more prestige. Have whatever honors of the world. Not evil in themselves, but they can't save us and they can't fulfill us. It's an illusory freedom because it's divorced from the truth of Christ's teaching, his commandments. Pleasure is a big one. Lust is a big one today. Promiscuity will make you happy. And as I mentioned before, the, I think the formula is to rely on yourself, focus on yourself, and get all this stuff, do all this stuff, instead of taking refuge in the Lord. As we hear from the readings today, take refuge in the Lord. That's the remnant. That's what they do. So the world proclaims a different gospel. I imagine Satan, who's standing on the shore of the sea, observing, turns his head when he sees one of the disciples keeping the commandments, right? He starts to focus on us then, goes after us then, makes war on the offspring of the woman. In the flesh, simply wants to continue downstream with the culture of the fallen world. So modernity offers freedom divorced from truth, which is just license. This is verse, this is opposed to the spirit of Christ, which is at the heart of the new evangelization, the spirit of Christ, the Holy Spirit that he gives to us through his paschal mystery. He's proposing a new moral life because he takes those commandments and he even deepens their, their obligation, so to speak, that we have to not only commit, a, we can't commit adultery, we can't look on a, a woman with lust. It's like aiming at the heart. Not only can you not murder, you can't hate your brother and sister. So that spirit of Christ goes interior to transform us from within, to make us holy. You know, that spirit of Christ is the strength of Holy Mother Church in her role of evangelizing today. That happens through the zeal of, of people, of disciples, trying to spread that good news, of, of the radiance of holiness. I think that's the message we need to give today. If we just reflect the message of the world, of permissiveness, why, why join the church? There's better stuff going on. There's more exciting things, to places to go. Why come to church if it's filled with the spirit of the world? They can get that and more, more of it in the world itself. That proclamation of the new evangelization is a call to faith and conversion. That these commandments show man the path of life. They lead us to life. They lead us to a new promised land. Jeremiah 31, 31, this great prophecy of the new covenant, you know, it's, it speaks of this law written on our heart, that the gift of the law is a promise and sign of the new covenant. When it be written upon our heart by the Holy Spirit, where we have to practice meekness and following that spirit, a new heart would be given to us where the Spirit dwells and guides us and strengthens us. The commandments are our first and necessary step towards freedom, not a legalistic interpretation. Remember the rich young man, he 
The young man comes up, what good must I do to have eternal life? And these Beatitudes and Commandments refer to the good of eternal life. Jesus questions him, you know, have you kept the commandments? So it's not legalistic interpretation because that ends with, come follow me. And the rich young man goes away sad because he can't let go of the, you know, the world, the flesh, and the devil, so to speak. But it's more than just the law, but that's a first step. Come have communion with me, follow me. The commandments are essential ground in which the desire for perfection, the desire for holiness can take root and mature. And it's fulfilled in following Christ, being a disciple, having communion with him, of giving of ourselves, of making a, a gift of ourselves to Christ. You know, following him, keeping those commandments, we can have this shared life with him, friendship. You know, and that, that communion takes place in the church through the sacraments, through the proclamation of the gospel, through conversion. It means holding fast to the very person of Jesus, partaking of his life and his destiny, sharing in his free and loving obedience to the will of the Father. John Paul II wrote that. I love that image of holding fast to him because the world considers this foolishness. You know, you're crazy if you do this. And it gives you a million reasons why not to. The, the flesh gives us a million reasons. Well, in the, in, the, in the midst of that storm, hold fast to the very person of Jesus. Keep our eyes on him and not on the idols of the world. To be conformed to him, to become a servant, to let his grace work in us, to be a member of his body, which is the church. St. Augustine said that the law was given that grace might be sought, and grace was given that the law might be fulfilled. See, if we, if we don't know the points of conversion, if we don't know the truth, what we're seeking, and the, the difficulty there, and why do I need grace? You know, I can just float, float downstream with life. The new law is the grace of the Holy Spirit given to us through faith in Christ. You know, in that interaction with the rich young man, he, he says there is only one who is good, that God is the source of all this goodness. Faith and, you know, the moral life they go together. It must be preserved, and we need to share in that goodness of Christ to do that. St. Thomas, in commenting on Psalm 4, he says, you know, who will, the Psalm talks about this, who will make us see good? He said, the light of your face, Lord, is signed upon us. That's what the, the Psalm says, and Thomas reflects on this, and he says, that we're, we're given reason to know the truth. Our intellects are made for the truth. All fields of knowledge, you know, seek that truth. And no darkness can block it out completely. We're made for that. We, we seek that. And that's what we're, we're called to live, to be salt and light, to, to radiate in the world all that is this goodness that comes from Christ. Jesus offers us the, the kingdom, you know, if we're humble, if we're seeking his will, his commandments, you know, through faith, we can live that by his spirit dwelling within us. That's what we're called to do.